Hey fantasy fans, this is Dan here with Tree Beard Book Reviews, and today I'm going to be doing a spoiler-free review of Ashes of Man by Christopher Rocchio, book five in the Sun Eater series. Let's break it down. Thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel and making it the best it can be. Book 5 in the Sun Eater series. I just want to warn you for this review, this is going to be a spoiler free review, but there probably is going to be some spoilers for Kingdoms of Death and all the subsequent books in the Sun Eater series. So, uh, you know, again, ideally you've read Kingdoms of Death before we're getting to this book. This book is coming out in December 2022, so this year. Uh, this, I won't lie, this is my most anticipated read of the year. And I was super excited that and happy that I got a, a you know an e art copy from NetGalley to give you know an honest review. I have posted a Goodreads review of this on on Goodreads, but I just want to give a spoiler free review, talk about some of the things that I like about this book. You know, going over again like the the normal things that we're kind of discussing, like the prose, the characters, the story in general, what I liked, what I didn't like, and uh, yeah, tell you my overall thoughts and whether you should pick this up. I mean, if you're already at this stage, you've already read Kingdoms of Death. You're pretty well locked into the Sun Eater series. You really want to know what's happening with Hadrian Marlowe. And just like, uh, you know, just like me, uh, and this, like I said, I was super excited to read this book. So let's start breaking it down. I'm going to do a quick synopsis of what's on the back of the book. And then we're going to get into talking about uh, the characters and then the plot. The galaxy is burning. With the Cielsen united under one banner, the Solon Empire stands alone after the betrayal of the Commonwealth. The Prophet King of the Cielsen has sent its armies to burn the worlds of men. And worse, there are rumors, whispers that Hadrian Marlowe is dead, killed in the fighting. But it is not so. Hadrian survived with the help of the witch Valka, and together they escaped the net of the enemy. Having learned a terrible truth, the gods that the Cielsen worship are real, and will not rest until the universe is dark and cold. What is more, the Emperor himself is in danger. The Prophet King has learned to track his movements as he travels along the borders of Imperial space. Now the Cielsen legions are closing in, their swords poised to strike off the head of all mankind. All right, guys. So that is the you know what's on the on the inside cover of Ashes of Man. So again, there is spoilers for Kingdoms of Death. So if you haven't read Kingdoms of Death, don't read the back of the book. But uh, yeah, guys, this story is a really emotionally driven story. I will say, you know, with this book. It was originally Kingdoms of Death. So Kingdoms of Death was these two books, Ashes of Man and Kingdoms of Death in one. It would have made it a very large book, probably the biggest book in the Sun Eater series to date. But it was broken down into two books just because of the, you know, the paper shortage that happened, you know, during uh, the plague that will not be blamed. <laughs> so, um, so there's a good reason for that. But actually, you know, I find that the breaking of the book into two, you know, two pieces, Kingdoms of Death and Ashes of Man was actually a good thing for me. I felt it was nice to have that breather, that gap in between reading the two books. So I think if you, it was all one book, it maybe would have been a bit too long and, you know, it might have had some pacing issues. And, you know, it really gave me a breather because I think, you know, to, to deal with everything that you deal with in both Kingdoms of Death and Ashes of Man would have been a lot in one book. So I'm kind of glad it actually got broken down into two. So, you know, really to describe this book, it's, it's, it's epic, but it's also heartbreaking. This book is... Um, you know, I actually took a five day break from reading after finishing this book. I, I read it in five days, but it took me, you know, a few days to recover after reading because it is emotional. So let's kind of get into the characters and, you know, discuss the character Hadrian Marlowe. Back with Hadrian Marlowe, obviously he's our, our main character, but Hadrian's at a really different stage in his life. He is, he's a lot older. We are with old man Hadrian, essentially at this point. Um, Hadrian, you know, from where... Kingdoms of Death leaves off. So this book actually starts very differently from a normal Sun Eater book. It doesn't open like Demon and White or Kingdoms of Death. It's literally hours after the events of Kingdoms of Death. So it picks right back up. So uh, usually, you know, Sun Eater typically opens up with like an action sequence and kind of, you know, puts you back on the playing field of, okay, understanding where you are, what's the time period, you know, how old is Hadrian. This one, you know, it's only a few hours right after the events of Kingdoms of Death. So it's kind of nice to see that you know, transition, but you kind of can feel that this is a different Sun Eater book. So yeah, like Hadrian, he's a lot older in this book. You know, he's he's almost probably 400 years old at this point, or three 380 to 400 years old. So, you know, he's, I guess, you know, halfway through his patrician life. He's an old man, 
but he's also kind of burdened by you know this long and dangerous life he's had you know he's had such uh you know he's been he's been put through many trials throughout his life and he suffered immensely and you really kind of feel this in hadrian the emotional damage the trauma that he has to deal with and you know you're really kind of stuck in hadrian's head well, obviously you're stuck in hadrian's head but it's just a much darker sun eater book uh, just mentally, you know, there's there's maybe not as dark as the events as Kingdom of Death. But, you know, Hadrian is, is processing that grief and that trauma. And you're really kind of with him every step of that way. And it's, it is, it's heartbreaking in some moments. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that this is broken up into two books for this reason that, you know, it kind of spreads the heartbreak over uh, over several pages. But, you know, the thing with Hadrian that I've always just enjoyed that he's just, he is interesting, but he's flawed. He's he, but he's equally interesting and flawed, right? You know, he's, you know, by this point, I've, you know, read five books of Hadrian, and I, I feel like I understand him. I feel like I know the decisions he, he's going to make, but he still kind of comes out of the, you know, can can surprise me. There was a moment at the end of the book that surprised the heck of me that I didn't see that coming. Um, and just, you know, the, his reaction to things. I really just love Hadrian as a character. He's so fascinating, and you you, you know, you're just, the way Christopher Rocchio writes this character, you're in tune with all of his emotions. He he kind of lets no nerve go untouched. You know, this book really felt like a raw nerve being touched. And, you know, you really see that doubt in Hadrian where he's at that stage. You know, he Hadrian really plays that warrior motif where um, if the warrior has no war to fight, the warrior will war within society. But, you know, because of Hadrian's life, you know, the warrior, he's reluctant to pick up the sword. You see a reluctant Hadrian in here. And, you know, it's it's at a point where like he's he's a broken character and you're you're really along that journey of him healing. So uh, again, Hadrian's such a fascinating character. The last thing I want to say about characters, you know, we're, we really kind of hit a point by the end of this book where you see this is how Hadrian becomes the Sun Eater. We're not there yet, but you're seeing that formation of how he becomes the character he states he is in the beginning of, you know, way back in Empire of Silence where, you know, you know he destroyed a son. And you, you're really seeing this descent, these steps that are being made and taken for, for Hadrian to become the Sun Eater. So I really like that exploration. So I'm really going to talk about side characters now. So, you know, really with the events that have happened in Kingdom of Death, we lost a lot of side characters. But we have a few that are kind of left with us. And, uh, you know, they're really great. Like, Christopher really explores the characters of, like, Valka and uh, and Lorien in this book. You really appreciate them and how they support Hadrian, how they love Hadrian, and how, um, you know, he needs those two in his life to kind of keep him centered. And just, you know, you it's just more of them. Like, they have their own struggles that they face, and they have their triumphs and their failures. And it's kind of great to see that growth of those characters. That was maybe some of the weaker things about Sun Eater is, you know, sometimes the side characters aren't as prevalent because you're mainly in the head of Hadrian. I never get tired of being in the head of Hadrian, but it was nice. Like, there was almost, I think, a chapter where it felt like you were in the head of Valka. So it was great to see that that shift. And uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed his exploration with those characters. Just greater attachment to those characters. And obviously more emotions kind of come out uh, throughout this book. So uh, let's get on to more of the plot points that I really enjoyed. As you guys, you know, heard in the blurb of the book, Hadrian gets pulled back into, you know, the emperor's court because the emperor is under threat. So he's pulled into this court. More politics happen. There's just a lot of things kind of going on. And, you know, Hadrian, even though he doesn't want to play these games, these political games, he's such a valuable piece on the chessboard that he can't be left alone. He can't be left out of it. So he kind of gets brought into everything. And uh, he's not good at politics. He's too blunt for politics. But it's great to see this type of character being thrust into a political position. And Hadrian, and, uh, Hadrian well, Christopher Rocchio just writes it massively. He, his, the way he writes politics and how cleverly he writes some of these characters, uh, you know, around Hadrian. Again, we are still relying on, obviously, Hadrian's recollection of these events. But it, it's still so well done. And maybe there are obviously some embellishment. And this is where it kind of comes into play, that, you know, unreliable narration of Hadrian where, you know, is, you know, what Christopher's telling us and Hadrian's actions. So it's almost sometimes they're counter to, to what's going on. Because uh, Hadrian, you know, old Hadrian, even older Hadrian does pop in to tell you his intent a lot of the time. So I did love the politics going on. I'm just, I'm a sucker for politics in books. And I think Christopher Rocchio writes it better than, you know, he reads some of the best. He writes it's politics in books, some of the best. So 
Uh, yeah, I absolutely love that. And uh, I will get into some negatives. So in this one, um, you know, it's really kind of a continuation of the tone of Kingdoms of Death, which makes sense since it is, you know, it's Kingdoms of Death, essentially. So it is a darker tone. There's obviously a little bit more, you know, emotions going on in this book. It's a bit more darker. I don't mind those, but I, I will say, you know, this book, it's, it's not as wasn't as good for me as Demon in White and Howling Dark just because those two books are different because they kind of have the rule of cool where a lot of really cool things kind of happen and they were just in a much cooler settings that I enjoyed you know with Vorgosos and then just kind of what happened on like the capital and, and stuff like that so those books are just uh just edge this one out still a little bit but there were certain things in here that you know um didn't irk me but I was just like okay uh, one of the things was the combat, especially near the end of this book. I found it a little bit repetitive. I found it overstayed its welcome just a little bit. And it kind of muddled it a little by the end. I was like, I was not confused, but it was just more like, okay. It just felt like the same kind of scene happened again, where I was like, you know, I'm okay with it. But it, it would just, it's overstayed its welcome just a tad. Uh, there is a lot of repetition going on, but I think that's really done to kind of emphasize the emotional state that Hadrian Marlowe is in. Like I said, it's it's a dark time for Hadrian. It's a dark time for you as a reader. And he, again, essentially, you know, we know that Hadrian has been kind of being forged into the Sun Eater. And uh, this is kind of that forging that's happening. So it's, it's a dark space. Um, Hadrian's not in a good space mentally. And you're kind of doing a lot of, like, he's doing a lot of physical and mental healing. So that that can be, you know, that might trigger some people, might make people, some people upset. But, you know, it's it's actually a really enjoyable read. But again, there is a lot of kind of repetition that comes up there. And uh, there was one thing, what I did want to mention, where there's these, a few things that are, um, you know, they're kind of, I thought they would play bigger parts in the book. You know, these things, I think, were, and they came into play more in Kingdoms of Death and uh but they never they haven't really kind of come to fruition i don't know if they just got dropped but um i i, I thought they were something that was going to play a bigger role but they haven't yet so that was one thing where it felt like a drop storyline essentially but who knows you know christopher romai picked it up in the final book so i'm really excited to to get to that one so anyways guys this is my spoiler free review of ash as a man absolutely fantastic sun eater book if i was to rank all the uh all the books in, in order in terms of my enjoyment uh ashes of man actually is a pretty high spot so i would say first one is demon in white howling dark then ashes of man and i would say kingdom of death and empire of silence are tied for that four spot so absolutely fantastic book uh, again you know christopher rocchio just knocking out of the park and, and like there's some things i don't even really need to say but i will kind of say them as you know, Christopher Rocky as a writer has grown so much from where he was in Empire of Silence to where he is now in Kingdoms of Death. And he just keeps getting better as a writer. His clarity as a writer is, uh, you know, he's getting better at writing more emotionally and you, you get pulled along with the story. Like there was like this book, like I think I read it in like four or five sessions over four days, four or five days. And I just couldn't put it down. I was just so locked into the story because sometimes when I'm reading I, I'm one of those readers where I could just stop anywhere and walk away and put it down. But this one, I really felt like, oh, like I have to get to the end of the chapter or I, I just don't want to put it down. And like I would read for sins where I'd look up and I'm like, it's it's two hours later. <laughs> I'm just like, wow, I've been so locked into this book. But yeah, Christopher just has an uh, just an unbelievable way of writing and just keeping you focused on this character. And that's the thing, you know, with, it's it's hard with first person because... You know, after a certain amount of books, you get bored of them. Like, you can get bored of the main character. You just start, stop liking the main character. And I've never felt that with Hadrian. I've always really enjoyed Hadrian as a character. And it's just, he's kept me more engaged. And, you know, I've been on this, you know, long journey with him already. And I, I need to see it to the end now. So, anyways, guys, that is the spoiler-free review. So, I guess to give him my rating, uh, I'm going to give this one a Treebeard Seal of Approval. Ash is the man. Absolutely fantastic. One of my top reads of the year, for sure. Um, I will be doing a breakdown, you know, coming a little bit later, talking about, you know, third quarter and ranking my books. So anyways, guys, pick up Sun Eater. You still have some time now. If you're going to get into the series, you know, pick it all up and, you know, read them all before December. So that's it. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.